This morning I want to speak to you on the subject that I've entitled The Power of Confession. The Power of Confession. The Power of Confession. The Christian life is a life that is always under attack. The Christian life is a life that is supposed to be a victorious life. It's supposed to be a life full of abundance. It's supposed to be a life full of prosperity. It's supposed to be a life full of good health. It's, about, it's supposed to be a life full of good things. But majority of the times we are experiencing the negative because we are facing challenges. And the devil, in most cases, is attacking us and causing us to stumble. He's attacking us, sending demonic influences, sending demonic activities to derail us from the things that should actually be propelling us to greater heights. So as a Christian, there are three things that normally will derail you from your, your purpose, will derail you from uh, your victory, will derail you from your destiny. And these things, like I said, we, is the wickedness of the devil. And the second thing is uh, the schemes of man. Man is always out there to destroy another man, either through jealousy or through any other thing. I've seen people having great ideas, great minds, great concepts. And after sharing that concept with someone, someone just steals that concept and it becomes their concept. And the, the one who actually pioneered that concept is no more because somebody out there is out to destroy another person. So people out there, they're out to scheme. And there are schemes that are not there to make you a better person. There are schemes that are there to basically take you down, to pull you down as, as an individual. Hello? So you need to watch out for such, that there are people out there that are out there to destroy your life. The third thing that is an attack to you as a child of God is personal mistakes. So we have the devil, we have the schemes of men, then we have personal mistakes. The things that you yourself do, you commit. And sometimes you are arrogant and the pride of life takes you up there and you think you can do it all. And when you are up there, things collapse and you come down back to earth. So there are personal mistakes that we commit that we must own up, be men enough, be women enough to own them and say to somebody, I have messed up. I have messed up. And own up your thing. Own it up. And be men enough to say, I've messed up. And when you own up, there's no but. You just own it up to say, I messed up. My wife, today, I have messed up. I've done one, two, three. My husband, I've messed up. I've done one, two, three. And you own up. Because these three things, if you don't deal with them, they will consume you up. They will eat you up like cancer in your body. Because anything that is unconfessed, anything that is unconfessed and is inside the heart of man, is like cancer. It will eat you up, eat you up, eat you up, eat you up. 
But in all these battles, this morning allow me to submit to you that you can conquer these things through something that is called the power of confession. The power of confession. And I want to define confession and uh, here's the definition that I want us to, to look at. They say it's an action weight. Action weight. That means admission, acknowledgement, declaration, or statement of an individual for confirming what or she believes. In other words, we must be able to acknowledge. We must be able to do what? Admit. We must be able to do what? Declare. So, all these are more like doing weights. You can't declare when you are not opening your mouth. You can't admit when you are not opening your mouth. And you cannot even confirm when you are opening your mind, unless you want somebody to, to guess. And that's what normally people want us to do in families. They want us to guess what they are thinking, guess what they are feeling, guess what they need, guess what they, they, they want. So communication in the family should be like, you declare, you admit, you confirm. So there should be some action. Usupao rinya mundo ho ha otoka otoka sin. Meo otoka sin. You do something to show that you, you need something. You don't just keep quiet and think things will be automatic. You cannot, as a believer, have a positive life, but then you have negative thoughts. These two can't work together. You cannot have a positive life and then try to have the negative thoughts because these two, they are always fighting. The positive life, Paul says, the good that I want to do, I cannot do, but instead I do the bad that I don't want to do. Hello? You want to do good. You want to be a good person, but the good that you want to do, you can't do. But instead you do what? The bad that you don't want to do. And that's because in most cases, the negative thoughts are there in your life. And you are entertaining them, entertaining them, entertaining them. And as you entertain them, they start becoming part and parcel of your life. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his mind, so is he. So as you think, as you speak some things, as you continue to speak some things, so are you. <clears throat> so the mind is more like a birthplace. When a lady is pregnant, this lady is thinking, I'm carrying this gift for nine months. On the ninth month, the lady gets ready to go to a hospital to deliver. But if this lady is going there with the attitude that this child is dying, this child is not going to make it, there are going to be complications, there are going to be this and that. The carrier of something precious, the carrier of something that you have carried for nine months, but through your actions, through your words, you start now speaking negativity into this thing that you have been carrying, this thing that you've conceived, 
you start speaking negativity over it. And as you speak negativity over it, it's a problem. Because when you get to the hospital, then you will find exactly what you have spoken. The doctors are messing up. They are skipping some surgery, some, 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 some steps that they should do. They, they, there's, there are some complications because you said there are some, going to be some complications. Because you've spoken these things. And when you speak them, they will come to pass. So I want to challenge you this morning as we go deeper into the subject of confession that you need to watch out how you use words. Words are spiritual things. Spiritual things. And when you use them, use them knowing that these things are spiritual. Whether for safe person or unsafe person, words are spiritual things. And that's why there's witchcraft. Witchcraft is nothing. It's simply somebody speaking and negativity over your life. Somebody declaring. And this person who is declaring this negativity is believing this with all her heart or with all his heart. As he declares these things, this person is speaking negativity, negativity, negativity. And because they believe it, it's done. Because words are what? Spiritual. So you need to be careful when you use words as a child of God. You need to be careful when you utter words, when you speak words, be careful how you are going to use words. There are three types of confession that I want to deal with this morning. The first one is Romans number 10, verses 6 to 8. Romans 10, verses 6 to 8. It says, the righteousness which is of faith speaks in this way, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into the heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will ascend into the deep? That brings Christ from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word of God we preach. Verse number nine. If you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. The first type of confession I want to talk about is the salvation one, where we start our journey with God. Most of us, we get to a church Yes, we confess, Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, come and be my savior. And we, we just at the entrance. And we think confession ends there. But when we read this scripture, salvation here is more like a full package. In the salvation, God is not only talking about you being saved and going to heaven. There are a lot of packages involved in the salvation. There is a healing package there. There is a prosperity package there. There is protection there. There are a lot of redemption there. A lot of things in package or encapsulated in this thing called salvation. So for you now to access all these things that are encapsulated in, in salvation, you need to take them or the, take them or receive them through declarations. You need to receive them through confessions. The same way you say, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, come and be my savior. If you want healing, if you want salvation, if you want promotion, if you want whatever you need, you are going to be forced to declare some stuff, cause some things to be in your life through declarations of the mouth, through speaking. The Bible says faith speaks. That's what God say, God Paul is saying here. He's saying the righteousness which speaks by faith. So you need to speak 
some stuff. Come into the entry door, which is salvation. You are a child of God. You are born again. After being born again, you are starting now a journey of confession where you need to attract things that are not and you start to speak them into existence. Things that are not there in your life. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So there are some things you don't see at the moment, but you want them in your life. Because you want them in your life, the Bible says now faith is these things you must see them now in your life. And how do you see them now in your life? You need to step into another gear. Now you activate these things. You access these things from the heavens. Because Christ has already done the Lord of work for you. All that is needed is to speak. And as you speak, those things are now activated. They come from the spiritual world and are manifested in the physical world through the activity of speaking. If you don't speak, Majority of us as Christians, we believe the weight, which is the Bible. We believe it. But for this Bible to work for you, this weight must come from that laptop or from that tablet or from that Bible. You must take that weight, eat it, read it. As you read it, take it to the heart. As you take it to the heart, from the heart, you take it back now, you speak it back to God. And when you speak it back to God, it now becomes more powerful. It's now the Rama Wade. And this Rama Wade activates things. This Rama Wade causes things to happen. This Rama Wade, as you speak it, it activates, it creates. Hello? So we need to know that this confession for salvation does not stop at a point. Come into my heart. And you end there. You are entering into the world of people who speak. I want to move more. here. We speak. You open that mouth. You speak. You open that mouth. You prophesy. You open that mouth. You speak to your issues. Number two. The other type of confession, we see it in First John 1, 8. It says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Paul here is speaking to people who are saved, people who are born again, people who have accepted Christ as their personal savior. He's reminding them, in this walk with God, we stumble. In this walk with God, we go through some stuff that, that stump, make us stumble, that makes us sin, that makes us lose direction. And as you lose direction, Paul is reminding them, if you say you have not sinned, then you are making Christ a liar. And this is how you make Christ a liar. As a child of God, every time you fall into sin, even before you confess that sin, Christ comes before the Father and says, Father, forgive, forgive him, forgive him. Before you confess your sin, God, Jesus, on your behalf, he confesses that sin before the Father. The Bible says he is our high priest. And the work of our, the high priest is basically to take the sins of the people to God. So Christ is our high priest. And as our high priest, every time we miss it, every time we sin, he comes before the Father and says, I have paid with my blood, Father, forgive them. I have paid with my blood, Father, forgive them. He confesses your sins before God. 
But if now you as a child of God, you don't confess that sin, then you have made Christ a liar before God. Because Christ has already gone before God to say, I have sinned. You are making Christ a liar. Because he has already confessed the sin before God. So confession, John is saying, if we say we have not sinned, somebody took my tissues here, I don't know why. It's another problem that we have. Bring my tissues somewhere here, I don't know why he took the table. What is disturbing your cameras? Huh? Empele somewhere there, up far from the cameras. The lights are too hot. <laughs> so you need to go through a process of sanctification all the time. This process where you confess your sin unto God, we call it sanctification, a continuous process of coming before God and saying to God, God, purify me. God, cleanse me. God, purify me. God, cleanse me. A believer's life must always go through that process of sanctification, a continuous repentance, continuous confession, coming before God and asking God to cleanse you. Asking God to purify your life. Number three. James 5, 16. Therefore confess your sins one to another that you may be healed. If you can't do confession to God... <laughs> This one you can do. <laughs> but this is the highest level of maturity. Here is the highest level of a believer. A believer should have this where he can confess his sins to another brother, to another sister. Confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. I'll tell you, you need to have somebody you call your pastor. Not, not Rona, Bosoli, Bosit. Somebody you call your pastor. We think like a go. A go, Muruburu, Mok, a go. Look for somebody. Look for somebody you will trust. Look for somebody you can confide in. Look for somebody you can bear your soul to. Look for somebody who can say to this person, I'm going through this. I'm going through some stuff. This confession is the only one that is attaching healing. It says that you may be healed. The other ones, taking the Kibu Akatsu and Natalie. Yes, you are confessing to God. Yes, you are doing this and that. But your healing may take time. But if you confess your sins to men, because that's the lowest level, when you confess your sins to another person, you are, you are, you are, you are stepping low. And you are degrading yourself. You are burying yourself. You are saying, I am nothing. You are saying, I am nothing. And because God sees that you are coming from your pride, you are coming from this position. You are coming down there to confess your sins to another person. Then God has no choice but to come and just heal you. Yeah. And you will feel that weight being lifted up yeah. after confessing to another person. You will feel that weight gone. But if you bottle things up, people today they are saying depression, they are saying there's depression, there's mental health, there's this and that, there's this and that. All these are issues that people are bottling in. People are keeping things inside them. 
They are keeping these things inside them, keeping things inside them, keeping things inside them. But the human body, the human soul, is not meant to keep these evil things inside. That's why the Apostle Paul, when they cast out the devils, uh, and then they get into the, the, the pigs, the pigs could not even contain what the human being contained. They had to run for their life and were drowned in the sea. So you need to confess to another man. The highest level of maturity. Come to another brother. My brother, I'm struggling in this area. I'm struggling in this area. And you'll be surprised when you say to him, I'm struggling in this area. He'll also open up. Hey, I swear in here. Now, let I was struggling in this one. In this one. And then this person will encourage you. This person will encourage you. This person will encourage you. And this person will encourage you. That's why the Bible says, let those who are strong do what? Those who are strong should do what? Let those who are strong in the faith encourage those who are weak. And you should realize today you are strong. Tomorrow you are weak. You are not strong forever. You are up there today, tomorrow you are down there. The one who is down there, tomorrow is up there. So confess your sins to one another. And this confession to one another helps in two things. Number one, it helps in fellowship. You are able to cry and grieve with somebody. You are able to be there and support this individual. Number two, it also helps in terms of personal growth. As an individual, you grow when you confess these things because this other person will see to it that you, you grow up, you man up from that thing. But if you are just confessing your sins to God, there's no man who is watching over you to see that you have overcome this thing that you have confessed to man. So I was struggling like a condition, coming before God, God, I have problem with... Uh, with fornication, I have problem with fornication. I have problem with fornication. Mudimara, um, I forgive you, my son. What's up, Maya? Lord, I have problem. I have problem. But if you confess to another brother, and another brother will be there to say, My brother, I will watch your back from now onwards. I will be your God from now onwards. Let's do life together from now onwards. When you are free, let's most of the time be together until we gain strength. Yeah. One good. Absolutely. Three critical principles of confession. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. A closed mouth it's a closed destiny. Genesis chapter number one. God never does anything without speaking it. God never does anything without speaking it. In the beginning, God said. 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 God was saying, let there be this, 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 let there be this. And as he was speaking these things, these things were coming into activation by speaking. And you have the same DNA of God because you are made in the likeness of God. And because you are made in the likeness of God, God has given you a, a certain energy inside of you. God has given you the creative power inside of you so that you can be able to speak some things into existence. You can be able to say, I'm coming out of this. You can be able to say, I am rich. You can be able to say, I'm taking this tender. You can be able to say, I'm getting this post. You can be able to say, I'm doing this and that. As you stand firm on the promises of God, as you confess and proclaim the things that God has promised you. The Bible says his promises are yes and amen to the glory of God. So you need to be able to speak because if you don't open that mouth, if you don't open that mouth, then there's nothing to do for God. When you don't open your mouth, you are basically doing this to God. You are telling God's hands because you are not activating 
what God has deposited within you. God has deposited riches in you. God has deposited riches inside of you. And these riches for them to come out of your belly, they must be spoken. You need to speak these things. And as you speak them, they will come to pass. As you speak them, they will come to be. If you don't speak them, nothing. You are quiet. But it's like you are in that thing where people just behave and they don't speak. You need to speak. Open that mouth. Open that mouth. Open that mouth and speak. The seed of the word of God will grow when it's planted by confession on the tablets of our hearts. When we have the seed of God, the seed of faith in us, when we speak it, it will grow. When we speak it, it will grow. When we speak it, it will be increased. So let's learn to call the things that you desire. Learn to declare them. Learn to thank God for these manifestations before they come in the physical Learn to confess the word of God. Learn to speak the word of God. Learn to speak the, 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 the word of God. And as you declare, there's a supernatural intervention all the time when you speak and declare the word of God. God intervenes in a supernatural way when you declare the things of God. So don't close that mouth because when you close it, you are closing your destiny. You are closing your destiny. When you close that mouth, you are closing your destiny. So learn to speak. Le monyana ya la cheva tu hamata. Wa mu omra ori auma. You talk something. Cannot just assume or no. Kya mata kya mata kya mata. At least if you leva leva san language ya leva ka go gaisa ba re They will speak their language So we expect God to do some stuff in our lives but we are not speaking them And 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 and, and I don't know why And this goes for all things in our relationships. Let's learn to speak what we want. If you want your husband to do certain things, tell him, I want this thing done this way. Don't just assume. People copy things outside there. They go out there, they copy some stuff, and after copying some stuff there, when they come home, they want those things that were done there to be done in the family. And because they can't voice it out to say, do it this way, out of, why, why, do you, why did you learn this? But if you communicate well, we should be able to say, open that mouth. Hold me this way. Do this way. Do this way. Do this way. Communicate. Communicate. It's a therapy. Communication itself is a therapy. I hope I'm not derailing. But the Spirit is leading me to this. Communicate. Don't assume. For people should know what you want. Communicate what you want. Amen. 
Hay que leerlo a él. Well, number two. Principle number two. The computer is misbehaving. Okay. Number two. When your confession negates the terms of the covenant, even God cannot help you. When your confession negates the terms of the covenant, even God cannot help you. Majority of us, we know what the word of God says we should do. And we will pray for some stuff, pray for some things. After praying for them, immediately you leave the prayer room, you talk negativity against that which you have prayed for. Ah, tender at it. Ah, more business at the other This and that. Whatever words you will say, we speak a lot of stuff after praying for some things. And when you do that, when you talk negativity over some things you have prayed for, when you talk negativity over the promises of God in your life, you are tying God's hands at the back. God is supposed to be moving things as you declare as you declare god in heaven should be manipulating the environment for you but when you talk negativity you are tying god's hands at the back so god has no nothing to do now god just sits and has nothing to manipulate for you let me be scriptural Proverbs 18.21 Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruits and bear the consequences of their weights. I said words are spiritual. You may speak them here, they go to the future. Speak them here, they go to the future. Speak them here, they go to the future. Whether negative or positive, speak them here, they go to the future. You will find them patiently waiting for you somewhere here. <laughs> patiently. And when you reach that place, you will receive the reward of your weights of the negativity you have been speaking or the positivity you have been speaking. And the Bible says you should now live with what? The consequences thereof. Yeah. Consequences of what you speak. Consequences of what you say. So don't just take lo words loosely or no, it's just a joke. No, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. This is life and death. When you speak some things, know exactly what you are saying. Because they can kill or they can make you live. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. You need to be able to realize that without faith, you cannot please God. So if you come to God, you are believing God for something, but in your heart, you have doubt. In your heart, you are saying, I don't believe. In your heart, you are saying, I cannot make it. In your heart, you are saying, I'm not worthy to receive this. In your heart, you are saying, I cannot be able to do this. You pray, but at the same time, you nullify that which you are praying for. 
The Bible says you cannot please God with that kind of attitude. Because you are violating the principles of God. You are violating the covenant of God. The covenant of God is his promises are yes and amen. And if his promises are yes and amen, you must be able to declare the same, to say, yes, I am the righteousness of God. You must be able to say, I am rich. You must be able to say, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. You must be able to declare some stuff. That is the word of God, confessing it. But if you don't confess it, then it's a problem. Then it's a problem. James 1, 5. If anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Verse 6. But when you ask, you must believe. You must believe. When you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind, that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Verse 8, such a person is double-minded, unstable in all they do. So, you cannot come to God, and at the same time you are doubting him, you are professing this, at the same time, you are negating. You are saying this. Your actions are saying the opposite. Yeah. Then it's a problem. You need to rise up and begin to speak positive things. Begin to speak the word of God. Begin to declare the word of God upon your life. When you do that, then you know you will become victorious. When you do that, then you know life will be good to you. Point number three. When we have issues, we can take authority over them with our confessions. When we have issues, we can take authority over them with our confessions. It is true we are going to have shortfalls. It is true we are going to stumble. It is true we are going to encounter problems here and there. But when we encounter them, we need to be able to do what we call power of confession. Confess something different from what you are experiencing. You are sick in your body. You should be able to say, yes, I am sick. The symptoms are saying I am sick. But what does the Bible say pertaining to your sickness? The Bible says you, are, you were. Paul speaks it better. He says you were healed. Not you are healed. You were healed. You've long been healed. And because you've long been healed, what is left is to access that healing. That has already been paid for. And you access it through what? Through confession. You speak. You speak. You speak and declare. You speak and declare. And as you declare these things, they are manifested. Zechariah 4, 6-7. Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, with shoutings and crying, Grace, grace unto it. Zerubbabel, living at the time of Zechariah, Israelites are going through a tough time. It's like there's a giant before them. There's a mountain before them. 
There's a problem before them. And this mountain is so great. It's so big. But Zechariah is saying something great here. He's saying, who are the mountain? He's asking this mountain, you are a giant. Who are you? You are a mountain before me. Who are you before God? Who are you before me? And he's saying it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. And says, mountain, you shall be made plain. You need to be able to speak to your issues, to be able to speak to your mountains, to be able to speak to your problems. And say to your problem, I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to come out stronger. This marriage is going to work. This thing is going to work. This thing is going to work. This thing is going to work. You need to be able to speak to that issue. You speak to the issue. Speak to the issue. Speak to the issue. And allow, as you speak, allow the Spirit of the Lord to do the rest. You do the speaking, the Spirit of the Lord will do the activation. Hebrews 10.22 Let us draw near with a true heart full of assurance, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our faith without wavering. For he that is faithful, for he is faithful that promised. We need to be able to hold on like a bulldog. Not shaken. Holding to the faith. Holding to the cross. Holding to that promise. That God you promised. And because you promised, you hold on to that promise. You cling to that promise. You cling to that promise. And speak some ways to yourself while waiting. Say, he that started this good work in me shall bring it to completion. Hello? I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Speak some sense to yourself. Yeah. Encourage yourself. The Bible says, David, they went, they fought some people after fighting. When they came back, the wives, the children, everything were taken. And people were crying. Oh, beside you, I'm away. Hey, hey, hey. And the Bible says, David went somewhere and David encouraged himself in the Lord. You need to be able to do that when you are down. When the chips are down, when everything is down, you need to be able to hang on to the cross, hold fast to the cross, and declare some things. I am coming out stronger. I am coming out of this situation. This sickness is not going to kill me. This disease is not going to kill me. This cancer is not killing me. This thing is not killing my life. These drugs are not taking my children. You need to speak some sense to yourself. He that promised is faithful. Let's stand on his faithfulness. When you are attacked from all angles, you can take Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And you shall refute every time that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And they are vindication from me, declares the Lord. So when everything is war around your life, the devil is waging war against your life, everything around you is war, you can stand on the promises of God, say, no weapon fashioned against my life shall prosper. All these darts that the enemy is, is, is firing towards you, you are able to take the helmet of God, the shield of faith, 
You are able to put on the whole armor of God and stand strong and say, I am more than I am in Christ Jesus. And you nullify the works of darkness. And you nullify the fairy darts of the enemy by the word of the Lord. Using the word of the Lord as a shield. Using the word of the Lord as a sword. The Bible says it's a two-double-edged sword. You can use this word to defend yourself. You can use it as a shield. You can use it as a weapon, as an armor of weapon, where you can attack your enemy. So we need to rise up. 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 Lastly, never allow the facts or the circumstances around you to dictate your destiny. Never allow the circumstances around you to dictate your destiny. You need to be able to look at your current status and say to the, the devil, I'm not this. You are not going to define me by my current status. And as an individual, don't define people by their current status. Majority of you, sometimes you miss your blessings because you define people by their current status. <laughs> so learn to define yourself from the perspective of God. Learn to define yourself from the position of God. And when you define yourself from the position of God, you will never go wrong. You will never go wrong when you define yourself from the position of God. So don't allow your current situation. You might be going through some stuff now. You might be going through some things. Maybe right now it's bad. Maybe right now you are broken. Maybe right now everything is bad. But you can rise up and begin to define yourself from the God's perspective. Who God says you are. You can begin now to, to speak and say some stuff to God. God, I am not this rubbish. God, I'm not this. I'm not this poor God and begin to speak the things that God says you are in your life. And as you call them forth from all angles, you call them all from all angles, you call and declare all these things that God says you are. As you activate them, I assure you, you're going to rise. And when you rise up, you're going to come back better, stronger, and bigger in Christ Jesus. Stand on our feet. Lift your hands to the Lord. Father, I thank you. You are awesome in power. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let this word, Lord, never depart from our hearts. Let it change us, Lord. Let it change our lives. Let it make us, Lord, much better, Lord. And let confession now, Lord, be our lifestyle as we live a life of confession to the glory of your name. Must I thank you. I bless your holy name. In Jesus' name I thank you. Amen. Go out there. Conquer the weak. Dominate the weak. And activate your mornings, activate your nights. God bless you.